Capturing images on the water is a very different experience to shooting on land. On land we can often see miles and miles into the distance, being able to use objects like faraway mountains in our composition. On the water, however, we are far more restricted in what we can see, and it's rare to have visibility reach further than 50 meters or so, of course depending on where you are in the world. So in this video I want to talk about foreground elements both in how it relates to composition, but also how it can be used in storytelling. And I've come up with five of the most important reasons why I think foreground elements are so important. Now, a little while back, I released a short video from a recent whale shark encounter I was fortunate enough to experience here on Koh Tao. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend that you do. I'll add a link to it in the description below and you can go and watch it next. But in this video, I will pull some shots from this encounter to help explain why foreground elements are so important. So let's get started with the first reason why foreground elements are so important and it's simply the lack of a background. I already mentioned that on the water we are always restricted by visibility and that often means that the subject that we are filming will not have any background other than the blue or green water behind them. And I'm not saying that a blue or green background is necessarily bad, it can of course look really good. But the lack of anything distinct behind the subject can make the image look flat, perhaps lacking in depth or even make it difficult to understand scale. For example, it can be hard for me to understand the size of an animal based on video footage, but it's certainly easier to judge if you have something to measure it against. And that can make your video more impressive and help create a feeling of what the experience was actually like. So for those reasons, foreground elements can be quite an important feature to help your viewers understand scale and simply to make the experience feel more immense. Next up, we have depth and how foreground elements help create depth in your images. So first off, what is depth? Having depth in images creates a sense of place and it can help draw your viewers into the shot. It also plays a key factor in composition, which I plan to cover more in depth in a future video. Now, depth in video can also be very dynamic, where you can choose to add motion to the scene by having the camera move in a certain way that makes sense for the shot and your subject. That way, the depth can have more impact compared to a static shot. Finally, Depth can also be created by your camera's depth of field, or in more common terms, what's in focus and what's out of focus. This is of course limited to your underwater camera's ability to create depth based on sensor size, lens aperture, and focal range. To sum it up, depth can help you create a more visually interesting and dynamic image that will help draw your viewers into the shot and it's one of the things I take advantage of constantly when shooting on the water. My next reason for using foreground elements is to help reveal your subject. Whenever possible, I love to use the underwater landscape to my advantage and have foreground elements block or hide my subject and hopefully have them emerge in a way that is interesting to the viewer. The outcome of such a shot can often be quite more dramatic or surprising to the viewer. It can, however, be rather difficult to achieve, depending on your subject. If you are filming people on the water or a very predictable marine subject, achieving this shot isn't too difficult. It simply requires a bit of planning or just quick thoughts and reactions from you, the filmmaker. If you are filming a subject that is harder to predict, however, I don't really recommend capturing these types of shots first. Personally, I usually start thinking about these shots if I've already captured a lot of other types of footage or the opportunity simply presents itself owing to my and the subject's position in relation to one another. Regardless, it can be a great shot that can help you tell your story and also up the production value 
and look of your videos. It can also be really helpful in creating transitions, which is my fourth reason for using foreground elements. Transitions in filmmaking is something I'm a little obsessed with and still learning about, because having a good transition game can make a huge difference to your videos. So what's a transition? Basically, it's how we get from one shot to the next. And more importantly, how do we achieve it in a way that is non-distracting and pleasing to the viewer? Now, you've probably seen videos where fades are commonly used to bring the viewer over from one shot to the next. It might be fading to black or just fading between the shots. And while this is a fine way to transition between shots, I often find it overused to the point where the transitions themselves can become distracting. But to put foreground elements into the mix, we can achieve transitions that just simply make sense to the eye. Let's say you want to transition from a anemone fish to a whale shark. Anemone fish being these tiny little fish a few centimeters in length that live within anemones. It's a little tricky to sell a hard cut or a fade between these very different subjects. So instead, let's put a shot of a field of anemones in between and follow that up with the anemones in the background before jumping over to the whale shark. Now to me, that makes a lot more sense. And by the way, I could probably do an entire video just on transitions, and maybe I will. There's a lot more to cover here. But if you are interested in transitions and want to get inspired, go watch films where transitions are done well. One of my favorite directors is Edgar Wright, and his transition game is supreme. Go check out some of his films. I particularly recommend the Cornetto trilogy or Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Don't expect these films to give you concrete examples of underwater transitions, but just think of them as creative inspiration. That finally brings us to the fifth reason why foreground elements are so important, and that is how we can use it in story. And we've already touched on this a little with transitions and how that can help us create a better flow in our videos. But another important element to having a foreground is that it simply tells us more about where we are, what else is around us, and it helps us visually describe the setting that we find ourselves in. So let me give you an example. If you were going to keyword this shot, meaning trying to describe what you see, you might come up with something like a whale shark swimming in the blue sea accompanied by various fish. That's what you're seeing. But if we try to describe this shot instead, we might go a whale shark swimming in the blue sea above the coral reef, anemones and all its inhabitants accompanied by various fish. Not very poetic, I know, but that right there gives us a far stronger visual experience that can help us tell the story that we want to tell. Whether that story is describing the journey of our subject, its interaction with its surroundings, or any story elements that you want to incorporate. So there you have my five reasons for capturing and using foreground in your shots. This series of videos contains material from my underwater filmmaker courses that I teach here in Thailand. You can visit my website to learn more. Thank you so much for watching and please leave a thumbs up if you like this video as it really helps me out. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.